Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of Strength of Materials. In this session, I am going to discuss about the concept of uniaxial, biaxial and triaxial loading. So, let's look at these figures first. If you see the first figure here, this is a cube that I have drawn. It is extended along the x, y and z axis. If you have load of any type, tensile or compressive, acting along any one axis, say x, y or z, then it will be called as uniaxial loading. Suppose if you see that the load is applied along two axes, for example x and y here, it could be either x, y or it could be y, z or it could be x, z, any one of the three combination. In that case, it is called as biaxial loading. Suppose if you have the load applied along all the axes, x, y and z, then it will be called as triaxial loading as you can see here. One important thing is I have shown tensile loading everywhere. It could be either tensile or compressive type. It doesn't make a difference except the fact that the load will be of negative type for compressive load. Now we will start with the derivation. Calculation of different strains in uniaxial loading. As you can see the figure, I have taken a rectangle. Length is L, width is B and the thickness is T. There is a load of Px applied along the x axis. We will start with the calculation of area of the bar. Now I will be calculating the area of that end on which this load is applied. So if I calculate the area of the bar on which the load is applied, it will be B into T. That is a cross section on which the load Px is applied. So, this is actually the cross sectional area in case you want to write. Next, let me calculate the volume of the body. V will be L B into T. Now, I will calculate the stress. First, I will calculate the stress along the axis in which the load is applied. This is the axis along which we can calculate the longitudinal strain. If you recollect the concept, so along length we will have the linear strain and B and T will be the lateral sides in which the lateral strain is going to be exerted. So I will calculate the stress in the x direction. Let me call it as sigma. It will be Px upon A which will be Px upon B into T. Let me call this as sigma x. Now, if I have to say that there is a stress along the x axis, so that means that there will be linear strain in the x direction. Let me call it as Ex. It will be delta L by L or I can also say it is sigma x upon E. Since I have spoken about linear strain, I will next talk about lateral strain. Now there will be two types of lateral strain, one will be along the y axis and one along the z axis. As the length is going to increase because you can see this is tensile load, so obviously B and T will reduce in dimension. Had this been compressive load, length will decrease, B and T will compensate by increasing in dimension. So, lateral strain in the y axis or in the y direction Ey will be delta T by T. Another lateral strain along the z axis, the z axis Ez will be delta b by b because b is the dimension along the z axis. Now, we know Poisson's ratio mu or 1 by m as you call it is minus lateral strain to the linear strain. Now, since we know this formula, I can say mu will be equal to, now the lateral strain is Ey and Ez. So, I can write on minus Ey upon linear strain is Ex. So, I will write Ex. Therefore, Ey will be minus mu into Ex. 
similarly we can have ez equal to minus mu into ex so these are the two equations that i obtain next let me write down about volumetric strain volumetric strain ev is delta v upon v now delta v upon v is also the strain along x axis plus the strain along y axis plus the strain along the z axis now ex i write it as ex itself for ey i can write ey is minus mu into ex and ez i write as minus mu into ex so here if i take ex common what i get is 1 minus 2 mu so this is my delta v by v now also i can write delta v by v is equal to ex i have written as sigma x upon e so i will write this as sigma x upon e into 1 minus 2 mu so this is the equation which is required and this is a sort of derivation that i have done for uniaxial loading if i have to calculate sigma x for any numerical i will use the formula px upon a and the value of mu will either be given to me or from the ratio of lateral strain to the linear strain i can calculate the value of mu next we'll calculate the different strains in biaxial loading this figure has loading in the x and y axis the length is l b and t so we will start on the similar lines like the first derivation so i'll first calculate the area of cross section of the bar due to load px now if you observe since there are two types of loading when px will be considered at that time we will say that l is the direction or it is the length along which linear strain is taking place and b and t become lateral dimensions but when i say that py is a load in focus at that time t will become my linear strain l and b will become my lateral strain so this is something which needs to be understood so the area of the cross section of the bar due to the load px or or, or the area on which this load is acting is actually b into t let me call it as ax and similarly if i talk about the area of cross section on which py is acting let me call it as ay it will be if you look here carefully it is acting on this dimension this is l and this is b so i'll call it as l into b now let's talk about the volume of the body which has not changed so the volume of the body is again l into b into t next we will talk about the stress in the x direction due to load px so sigma x will be px upon a and this a is ax so this will be px upon b into t now let's talk about the stress in the y direction due to load py my sigma y will be py upon ay so this is py upon the area is l into b now next we will talk about the strains due to stress sigma x now since there is stress sigma x there will be some amount of strain as i told you that when we talk about the load px we will have stress sigma x and this l will become my linear strain so let me write down linear strain will be along the x axis so i'll write down linear strain along x axis or x direction let me say it is ex1 will be sigma x upon e 
Now I'm writing one over here because we are also going to talk about stress sigma y. So that time we will again talk about x, y, and z, all the three directions. So I will have one and two separately to distinguish between the two. Now, since this direction is linear, I will say that lateral strain will be along y axis or y direction. Can I say EY1 will be minus mu into EX1? If you have understood the first derivation, this is very simple because mu is lateral to linear. Your linear is EX1. So, I will directly write this equation. So, if needed, this will be written as mu into sigma x upon e. Next, let us talk about lateral strain along z direction. I can see e z 1 will be minus mu into e x 1. So, again minus mu into sigma x upon this is the equation. Now, we will talk about the strains due to stress sigma y. When we talk about load p y, there will be sigma y as a stress. When we say that the load is along y axis, this becomes linear and rest to become lateral. So, let us talk about the lateral strain. along x axis. I will say it is E x 2. This will be minus mu into E y 2 if you understand. And this will be minus mu into sigma y upon E. Then we will write down linear strain along y direction. we will have E y 2 will be sigma y upon E and we will again have lateral strain along the z direction E z 2 will be minus mu into E y 2 which will be minus mu into sigma y upon E. Now, let us talk about the volumetric strain like the previous derivation volumetric strain delta v by v will be e x plus e y plus e z. Now, e x will be e x 1 plus e x 2 which will be sigma x upon e and e x 2 if you observe this one is mu into sigma y upon e. Next, we have e y will be E y 1 plus E y 2. E y 1 is minus mu into sigma x upon E. So, I have mu into sigma x upon E and E y 2 is plus sigma y upon E. E z will be E z 1 plus E z 2 which is minus mu into sigma x upon E and minus mu into sigma y upon e. Now, if I add e x plus e y plus e z, it will be sigma x, I am just going to write all these terms, sigma x upon e minus mu sigma y upon e minus mu sigma x upon e plus sigma y upon e minus mu sigma x upon e and minus mu sigma y upon e. So, these are the various terms that I have jotted down. So, this will be equal to, now if you observe sigma x upon e and sigma x upon e is here. So, I can just take sigma x upon e common, I get 1 minus mu from these two terms. Next, when I talk about sigma y upon e, let me take it common. This is one term and I see sigma y upon e here. So, 1 minus mu again is common and for the last one, there are two more terms left which is again sigma x and sigma y. So, this will be 2 and this will be 2. So, these are the terms which I have added over here. Now, this is my delta V by V. If you observe carefully, 
1 minus 2 mu can be taken out common. So, what remains over here is sigma x plus sigma y upon e. When I rearrange this, I get sigma x plus sigma y upon e into 1 minus 2 mu. This is the equation for volumetric strain for a biaxial loading and I have already written the equation for various strains. So, if you look at the first derivation where I got the expression as delta V by V is sigma x upon E 1 minus 2 mu and for biaxial I get Ev is equal to delta V by V which is sigma x plus sigma y upon E into 1 minus 2 mu. You can observe for uniaxial it was only one stress. Now you have summation of two stresses. So with this I conclude this session. In the next session, I will show you the derivation for triaxial loading. I hope you have understood this lecture. If you have any doubts or if you want me to solve any particular derivation or numerical, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon for latest updates of my videos. I will see you in the next session. Thank you.